Good morning. Uh, it is uh, Monday, October 23rd. Um, my name is Juan Perez. I'm a foreign, uh, senior foreign exchange trader and strategist here for Tempest. We're going to take a look at what happened last week and what will be coming up uh, this week that may uh, make some moves for the U.S. dollar. And uh, we actually have had a pretty good two weeks uh, considering the fact that there's a lot of positivity in the air. Last week, the U.S. dollar went up another 1.2%. Uh, in general, uh, according to the Bloomberg Dollar Spot Index, so that means that uh, against its 10 major uh, counterparts, the U.S. dollar is thriving and similar to what was going on uh, the week prior. Um, a lot of it is the result that there is a much higher sense of confidence that the Federal Reserve is ready and willing to uh, do a hike uh, at their meeting in December. And this is actually based not just on speculation, but finally the manifestation of good economic data out of the United States. The chances of a hike now, now stand a little bit above 86% for December. So now the question will be with statements and other economic data points that will be coming up in the, in the last quarter of the year, will that help us um, to really have some guidance in what the Fed will do moving on to 2018 and 2019. Manufacturing has improved, industrial production has improved, and inflation elsewhere is what has kept the dollar afloat. Um, uh, consumer price uh, index figures uh, did come out last week for the um, United Kingdom and for the Eurozone, but the inflationary growth is not at the level where uh, the banks are feeling super confident that they can go ahead and hike as well. The European Central Bank will be meeting this Thursday and will likely actually point out that the accommodative uh, um, environment that the economy is currently under is a good thing and they might actually extend quantitative easing purchases nine months from uh, December. In the United Kingdom, the problem is wage growth. And there are some uh, in the uh, Bank of England that have uh, demonstrated themselves as not ready or willing to vote for a hike. So the dollar is really keeping afloat primarily out of policy divergence. When it comes to other currencies against the Japanese yen, it's actually gained a lot of ground because Abe had a very, very successful uh, reign uh, in the past few years with quantitative easing. And that accommodative approach is likely going to continue after his October 2nd, uh, 22nd snap election uh, resulted in very favorable results, uh, results for his party, which basically guaranteed that he's going to be prime minister uh, moving from uh, next year and into the next four years after. Um, the one olive branch that we saw over um, passed over this week by Merkel to um, Prime Minister Theresa May seemed like a good sign for Brexit, but it's not because those talks have actually been pushed towards the end of the year. And NAFTA continues to bog down on the Mexican peso, which fell to its lowest level in five months against the US dollar last week. So overall, we have a combination of issues elsewhere and the fact that there's a lot of confidence that perhaps tax reform will continue to flourish the equity markets and um, that there will be just enough economic momentum pushing us towards in, uh, forward into, into the fourth quarter that the December hike will be guaranteed and that there will be hikes coming up in, uh, in 2018 that will continue to propel the dollar to farther gains. Uh, thank you of course for watching. If you do have any comments, please go ahead and comment below and uh, uh, we'll see what happens this week as uh, of course we have the ACB coming up.